All righty, good evening. It looks like we are on Facebook Live, so we will go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. My name is Celia Lowe Smith, and I am the president of the Alpha Beta Gamma Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. It is my pleasure to welcome you this evening to our HBCU for Life program. And this is cutely titled, Debt-Free College Degree. This is an ongoing series in our hashtag, hashtag CAP program where we are providing information to both parents and students about how to obtain their college degree with an emphasis and a little extra love for HBCUs as directed by our international president and as a tribute to our founders that started Alpha Kappa Alpha at a historically black college and university, namely Howard University. So again, I wanna thank you for tuning in this evening. It promises to be a wonderful event. And with that, I will turn it over to my dynamic, phenomenal, and well-rested after a very busy <laughs> regional conference, <laughs> Vice President Sarkiki, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Madam President. Good evening, beautiful people. I'm Shakitha Jeffries, Vice President and Program Chairman of Alpha Beta Gamma Omega Chapter. On behalf of all members of Alpha Beta Gamma Omega, welcome to tonight's program, Secure the Bag debt-free college degrees with the talented brother of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated, Jordan Green. If you're following us on social media, then you know the notable North Atlantic region of Alpha Kappa Alpha under the leadership of Mary Bentley Lamar, Regional Director. Y'all know we set it off last week, leading on a high note as we painted the city of Baltimore, Maryland, salmon pink and apple green. The 52nd mayor of Baltimore, the Honorable Brandon M. Scott even graced us with his presence. As a commitment to service to all mankind, all regions within Alpha Kappa Alpha are dedicated to giving back to the communities in which we host our annual conferences. During the North Atlantic Regional Conference, we hosted a pop-up health fair, we hosted AKA night at the, arena, at the arena to support the arena players, the longest running African-American community theater in the nation. And we also donated $10,000 each in counting to Girl Trek and Sickle Cell Disease Association of America. Family, friends, community partners, and all members of Alpha Kappa Alpha, thank you for answering the call by helping Alpha Beta Gamma Omega chapter directly with this year's 91st North Atlantic Regional Service Project. With your help, we were able to support Souls for Souls donation drive, and together we donated $954.48. For every donation made to Souls for Souls, we were able to provide shoes, investing in resources for women to start a small business. Additionally, with your help, we were also able to purchase pre-made COVID-19 kits from Walgreens, and we exceeded our chapter goal of donating 19 kits as a chapter. With your help, we donated 82 kits that will be distributed to Baltimore area high schools. The pre-made kits included K95 masks, travel size hand sanitizer, and tra travel size hand wipes. Lastly, Alpha Beta Gamma Omega would just like to thank everyone who was, in who was able to participate in our regions just because community walk last Thursday, as we raised our awareness about Girl Trek and the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America. To whom much is given, much is required. Therefore, it is critical that we give back as a community whenever we can. It is also important that we highlight the service that we do, not only as a region, but as a chapter here in Eastern Baltimore County, Maryland. We want you all to know that Alpha Beta Gamma Omega chapter is dedicated to providing service to all mankind. Now, if you missed out last week, there is still an opportunity for you to make a donation. You can donate to Souls for Souls in any amount, if it's five, $10, whatever you have to donate, you can donate. And you can also purchase 
a pre-made COVID-19 kit from Walgreens as low as $6.99. So please just click on the links that's in the drop box um, that our technology chairman have dropped for you. So back to tonight's program, Secure the Bag debt-free college degrees workshop. This workshop aligns with Alpha Kappa Alpha's international program, Target One HBCU for Life, a call to action. During tonight's program, you will hear from our guest speaker, Jordan Green Ellis, who will provide strategies to help students and families secure financial resources to cover the rising cost of college. At this time, I will turn the floor over to my lovely sorority sister, Dr. Shonda Crowder, who will introduce our guest speaker. Thank you. Good evening. It is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Jordan Green Ellis. As an award-winning inspirational speaker with relevant messages, Jordan not only inspires and connects with his innovative presentation style, he also uses the musical intelligence stemming from his background as a musician to connect with his wide range of audiences. As one of the leading experts in education, he has been pivotal in the educational and personal development of students nationwide, primarily in Baltimore metropolitan and Washington DC areas. He has served as a high school teacher, student affairs professional, coach and mentor, for nearly a decade. He has recently authored his first book entitled Caps and Gowns, All Smiles, No Frowns, The Keys to Earning a Debt-Free Degree. Since journeying from higher education in efforts to make a larger impact on students and families. Having been compared to some of the industry's top speakers, such as Dr. Eric Thomas and Willie Moore Jr., He's primed and ready to enhance the lives of educators, youth advocates, students, and parents nationally and globally. Help me welcome our guest speaker for tonight, Jordan Green Ellis. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone that is listening on the Zoom as well as on Facebook Live. Do me a favor really quick. I just wanna make sure I'm in the right place. If you can hear my voice and see my screen clearly, um, I just need you to do me a favor real quick. Give me a one in the chat. If you can hear my voice and see my face clearly before we get started, give me a one. I love it. I see the ones rolling in. And again, if you're on Facebook, I just checked it. It's a couple of you guys on there. I need you to do this. I need you to be a good citizen and press that little share button at the bottom of the screen, press that share button at the bottom of the screen so that uh, everyone that you know, all of your friends and followers can get this pertinent information on this evening. Again, my name is Jordan Green Ellis, inspirational speaker, award-winning speaker, educational consultant, and author. And before we get into it, I just want to give honor to where honor is due to President Lowe Smith, to Vice President Jeffries, and of course, one of my copy moms, uh, Ms. Jennifer Harris, and all the lovely ladies of Alpha Beta Gamma Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Emphasis on the Omega. Shout out to the Qs. My name is Jordan Green Ellis again. A member of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated, but that's not important tonight. Tonight, we are going to dive in into a very, very important and pertinent topic. And what I want you to know this moving forward, right, is that my goal tonight is that everyone would leave here equipped, right? You're going to get equipped, but most importantly, you're going to be inspired to tackle this goal about getting a debt-free degree. So I just want to make sure that we're all good. I see the ones that are rolling in the chat. Everyone can see my face and see my screen. So we're going to get into it. I just want to tell you a little bit about who I am and how I got here. So I have a very... Uh, um, uh, not so unique story, to be quite honest, about how I got here. I grew up with mom and dad on the left side of the screen. My brother, it was us growing up. You know, we were the core group. Um, mom and dad both worked hard all of their lives and um, pretty normal upbringing. I played sports. I wound up playing Division One baseball at Coppin State University. And that's me in the middle. 
But that woman standing there in the middle is extremely pivotal to this story. And I can imagine uh, that many of the lovely ladies that are on this call and that are on Facebook are much like this woman in the middle. Her name is Roslyn Green Ellis. That's my mama, y'all. And um, I, how I got to this point was in uh, right before the, 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 the onset of the pandemic, right before the world shut down in January of 2020, I left uh, uh, my office at the time and I walked into my church. I'm a preacher's kid. Right. And so I walked into my church uh, during Bible study, right before Bible study. And my mom, who's the assistant pastor, uh, was there and we were just catching up. We were just, you know, you know, being a mother and son. I'm a mama's boy. Y'all have to admit it. And so we were talking. And I, I remember in that moment that my mother was approaching retirement. She's a, a, a retired Baltimore City Public Schools educator and uh, for almost 40 years. And, and I remember in the midst of that conversation that my mom was about to retire. So I said, hey, mom, um, you're about to retire. I know you're excited. How are you going to uh, uh, sustain yourself financially, you and daddy? Um, because, you know, that's, you know, that's where my mind was. I'm the youngest. I'm concerned about my parents. You know, they're getting up in age. I want to make sure they're good. So I asked, I said, mom, how are you guys going to sustain yourselves financially? And this woman who had literally taught people how to speak, how to uh, 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 structure sentences, how to articulate thoughts, how to uh, uh, taught subject verb agreement. This woman who had taught English language arts for almost four decades literally had no words to say. In fact, the moment was so tense, or the moment was so intense, rather, I should say, that it was almost as if someone had pulled out a remote control and pressed pause. My mother literally had no words to say. The only time I had ever seen this particular look on my mother's face when I um, had experienced the death of a, a young family member some years prior to that. And after about 60 seconds of silence, my mother responded to me with an answer that I had not often heard growing up. And her answer was, Jordan, I, I don't know. And she later in that conversation revealed a six year secret. And that was that she used a portion of her retirement, her and my dad, a portion of her retirement to fund my college education. And to make matters worse, I had already borrowed, borrowed student loans. And so my parents made a sacrifice that I can imagine that many of the parents on here, I'm a new dad, I will do whatever it takes for my son. And here's what I learned from that moment, right? While I can agree with you that some sacrifices are inevitable, but some sacrifices don't need to be made. How did I get here? I have background history in uh, the, the financial aid industry. And at that particular time, I was so crushed because of the information that I had obtained and information that I had implemented with students that I personally mentored, decreasing and eliminating student loan debt. And so I made a vow to myself so that no mother and son would have the same conversation. I made a vow to myself so that no parent and child, so that no auntie and uh, a niece or nephew would have the same conversation that my mother and I I had in January of 2020. So I put all the information in the book. It's called Caps and Gowns, All Smiles, No Frowns, The Keys to Earning a Debt-Free Degree. And some of you guys are going to be blessed with a few copies of that tonight. But I want to warn you, y'all, listen, all the information that you're going to get tonight is going to be amazing. It's going to be relevant. It's going to be exactly what you need. But it will be nothing if you don't use it. And so I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you to lock in with me for the next 20 or so minutes, 20 to 25 minutes, and get this good information. And we're going to have an opportunity for question and answer at the end of uh, my presentation this evening. So listen, y'all, I just need to make sure, again, that I'm in the right place. And uh, my favorite book is actually the greatest selling book of all time. It says, and all that getting, get understanding. So I need to understand if you guys are ready for these keys that I'm about to give you guys tonight for your debt-free degree. But if you're ready, and only if you're ready, do me a favor and indicate in the chat right now with these two words, just say, I'm ready. If you're ready for the keys, you can indicate right now in the chat, or if you're on Facebook, if you are ready for the keys do me a favor and put those two words i'm ready oh yeah i can't even see the chat but i see the numbers going up i love it i love it facebook where y'all at man i need to know who is ready for the keys so that you can obtain a debt-free degree can i tell you this y'all that student loan debt is higher than credit card debt in america can i tell you that this is a pandemic in and of itself when I wrote the book, the student loan industry was a 1.5, excuse me, 1.6 trillion with a T, trillion dollar industry. And about 77% of college graduates graduate with student loans. But what about the 23%? We're going to talk to you guys tonight about how to get into the 23%. 
So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm not the guy that's going to tell you what not to do. I'm not the guy that's going to that's going to tell you just don't do this. I am also the guy who is going to warn you and tell you what it is that you need to do. But we first have to address the very most important aspect. I alluded to it a little bit earlier when I told you if you get this information and do nothing with it, it's not going to be useful to you. So we got to address the most powerful muscle that is in the human body and it's the mind. This is actually the title of chapter one is you've got wings now. Of course, we know we don't physically have wings, but it's a metaphor. And when you have wings, there's no need for you to be walking around on the ground as if you can't fly. And so what I need everyone to understand that's listening to the sound of my voice right now, that's tuning in on Facebook, that's passing by on social media, and that's on the Zoom call this evening is that you have wings. I'm going to give them to you tonight. I'm literally going to put some wings on your back, but you've got to use them to fly. And so here's the first thing that we need to address. It's the mindset. I, like I said, you don't need to borrow, but you do need a plan. No, 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 no. I mean a strategic plan, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I need you to have every single step, and I'm going to give you pieces of that tonight so that you will be prepared and equipped so that you can get that debt-free degree, so that you can decrease and eliminate student loan debt. She couldn't be with me tonight, but I have a student who I've been mentoring for the past few years who is an out-of-state student, and she attends Coppin State University. I implemented some of the keys with her while I was writing the book, and she decreased $14,000 of student loan usage in a semester. Can you imagine just for a moment? I like to imagine. I like to take time to imagine the future, right? Can you imagine if this student from out of state would have got these keys before she entered Coppin State University or whatever institution, how much uh, uh, better off she would be financially? And so I'm telling y'all this to it, not to impress you, but to impress a point upon you. Listen, this information works, but you got to put it into play. All right. You need a plan. We're going to talk about some aspects to incorporate in that plan tonight. You need the right information. OK, for we perish for the lack of knowledge. That is another quote that's in one of my, my, my favorite book, the greatest selling book of all time. And so you need to know you have to have the right information. Listen, I'm going to talk fast, so don't listen slow. We got a lot of stuff to unpack on this evening, so I need you to get it. And of course, you can always follow up with me if you have further questions. Just reference this event and I got you, I promise you. OK, so in addition to the plan and the correct information, you need to give yourself significant time. Can I tell you that the foremost reason why students fall into the, into the debt trap is because they wait to two weeks before the semester starts to focus on their financial aid. They wait until the middle uh, of the semester to, to figure out what they got on their FAFSA. And so here's what I need you to understand is that among this plan is that you have to give yourself significant time. And we will talk about how punctuality, punctuality is going to be paramount um, uh, throughout the rest of our presentation this evening. Here's something that I want to leave you with before we get into the next part. If you do not have a plan, you will borrow. OK, I don't want to sugarcoat it. I want to I want to just tell you exactly how it is. If you do not have a plan, if you don't have the if you're not informed, if you don't have the right information and you don't give yourself adequate time, you are going to borrow. Do me a favor. I love interaction. Y'all going to get tired of me because I'm going to have y'all typing and chatting and all of that stuff. Listen, I need you to put in the chat. You're going to borrow if you don't have a plan. Matter of fact, you can make the Cliff Notes version. Just say you're going to borrow. You need a plan. You need a plan. You need a plan. And if you don't, you're going to be racking up that student loan debt. Let's go ahead and move forward. I want to give you some more information about that mindset piece that's so vitally important. A lot of times I run into families and students that think, no, we're just spending money on college. It's so expensive. And right, it does cost. But I need you to shift your mindset and change from an idea or a mentality of spending money to investing in your future. OK, I know that there's a lot of speculation about the value of a college degree. Listen, don't let nobody lie to you. The numbers don't lie. OK, the numbers don't lie. I'm an entrepreneur myself. I, I run a business. I get it right. You got a passion. Do your thing. But you get in that college degree is going to set you up so that you won't have to start at the back of the line. Hear what I'm telling you. Statistics show this and you can fact check me. I'm not one of those guys that is, is that you will earn one million dollars less over the span of your work career if you do not have a formal education. OK, and so that includes trade and technical colleges that includes two and four year universities. You must have that formal education because that's going to put you on a platform so that you can obtain a certain level of job. 
okay? So that when you get right out of college, you can obtain a job that's going to give you financial stability. As I mentioned before, college is a financial investment and it needs to be viewed as that. We don't need to go to college for the prestige of college anymore. No, those days are over and done with. It's not enough. It's not enough just to be going to a prestigious school. Oh, I just, I, I, my baby is going to college. Absolutely not. We need that baby to be going to college with little to no student loan debt because that's how we're going to change the trajectory of our lives. That's how we're going to be able to establish financial stability, not just for us, but for generations to come. We're talking about getting the bag, right? We're talking about getting our money right. This is where it starts. Everybody's talking about how they can get to the next level. A college degree is still a viable option. Don't let nobody lie to you. Don't let nobody tell you anything different. If nothing else, it can start you off and get you on a path so that you can establish financial stability. And if you have questions, I would love to dialogue with you at the end of that. So listen, changing your mindset from spending money on college to investing in the future. We're not just spending money on tuition and fees. We're investing in our financial future. Just like how uh, real estate investors invest in properties, just like how traders invest in cryptocurrency and EFTs, we are investing in college so that our financial future can be stable. Let's go ahead and move forward. Let's go to key number two. This is one of my favorite keys. As I mentioned before, many students and families get caught by surprise because they are ill-informed and they do not give themselves or misinformed rather, I should say, misinformed and do not give themselves adequate time. Okay. You cannot be misinformed. Now you're connected to me. All right, social media is at the bottom, hit me up. Now you're connected to me. You cannot be misinformed when you are, listen, you cannot just go to college just to go anymore. You will get caught by surprise. You will fall into the debt trap. How do I know y'all? It happened to me. It happened to me. That's why I wrote the book. And so I've gone through this experience so that no one else would. And so we've got to do our due diligence. You have to know before you go. Here's a piece of information that you may not know is that your institution is going to require your bill to be paid before you actually start classes. I know that there are ways around it. I know that you're thinking like, whoa, does that say, no, it is right. Your tuition and fees are due. They just give you some slack because they want to get that money. Can I be real? Can I talk like that? I don't, I just need to know if I'm in the right place. I want to make sure that we get this information. They're going to give you some slack. They're going to allow you to do a payment plan, but that money is still due. That money is still due. And so you can't get caught by surprise. How did I get caught by surprise? If anybody's familiar with Coppin State's campus, I left baseball practice about two weeks or so um, into the semester, and I got a call from the bursar. The bursar was like, hey, Jordan, uh, your class is about to get dropped, my friend. Whoa, what's going on? You ain't paid your bill. I love it. I love it. We're getting informed in the chat. The payment plans have fees. Yes, they do. I love it. I love it. So you got to give yourself adequate time. Here's an exercise that you can do long before you even step on a college campus. Are there any middle school or elementary school families on here? Let me see who's in the chat. Let me know who is here. If you are elementary, middle or high school in the chat or oh, excuse me, on the poll, you can go ahead and chime. I need to know who's here. If you are on what I call the littles, right? If you're still in K through 12 specific or rather K through eight, right? Here's what I need you to know is that you can begin to expose your child to college life, to a college campus. There are options for virtual tours. Now you can even schedule your own personal tour. You need to expose your babies to college life early on. They need to know that it's a viable option. I love it. I love it. All of you high schoolers, that are, are there any seniors, any senior families in here? It's really important. I don't want to get too much into your business, but if you're a senior family, I have an opportunity for you just for being here. I'm going to allow you to win my $1,000 scholarship or be in the drawing for my $1,000 scholarship that I give away every single semester. So if you are a, a, a senior in high school right now, you are qualified uh, uh, to be in the drawing for my $1,000 scholarship. I know I'm deviating, but I want to make sure that we get this information. I love it. So we got the parents here. I see some middle school and high school, none in college, but that's all good, right? So if you're not in high school, or, or even if you are in the, the first half of high school, right? Begin to expose your, your families. I love it. I love it. Miss Barksdale, I love it. I love it. 
uh, Miss Sidnor, I love it. Awesome. So even if you're in like K through 10, right? K through 10, you can begin to expose your family, your children to the college life. They need to know about student life. They need to know about the class. They need to know about the culture and climate of the institution because that's going to be a motivator for them. That's going to be a that's going to be a target for them because when they have to apply for these scholarships and they get tired, they're going to remember that seed that you planted in their minds when they were in middle school. They're going to remember that opportunity when they went up and shook that Q's hand. They're going to remember when they met that AKA on that institution's campus. Hear what I'm telling you? I know because it happened to me. So here's what I want you to do. Here's an exercise that you can do. It's more extensive in the book is, is I want you to put together your top 10 list of schools. OK, no boundaries, your dream schools. Don't worry about tuition and fees. Don't worry about whether or not you qualify to get into the school or not. Awesome. We're good to go with the poll, I think. Um, don't worry about any of those factors. I just need you to put it down on a piece of paper. Again, this is going to serve as a target for you. This is going to serve as your GPS. How can you get to a destination that you've never been without knowing which way to turn? And so this is going to serve as your GPS. This is going to be Siri for you. This is going to be your target. And so that your ambition, so that your desire, so that your, your will, and so that uh, what's inside of you can be directed towards a specific goal. And so I need you to put these 10 institutions on campus, excuse me, on a piece of paper, right? And I need you to write down the associated cost, admissions requirements, and your desired program of study. All right. This is an exercise that you can do. I prom I promise you, my son is four months old, but as soon as he gets to middle school, we on this already. We on this. <laughs> the lovely ladies told me to take it easy on him. I can't take it easy on him. We're not borrowing nothing. We're going to be in the 23 percent. All right. So I want to encourage you to implement this particular uh, uh, exercise with your family. Here's another key. Don't forget the fees. OK, it's tuition and fees. Somebody put that in the chat and fees, tuition and fees. It's not just tuition. It's the fees, too. I love it. I love it. And fees. I need some more and fees. I love it. All caps, baby. I love it. Yes, sir. I love it. I love it. And fees. It's so important. Y'all don't think that you're not gonna get those fees crept up on you, all right? Remind me during the Q&A to talk about a fee that you can avoid, okay? That you can evade. Let's go ahead and move forward. Let's go ahead and move forward. All right, let's go to key number three. Key number three is federal student aid. As a matter of fact, let me, let me go back. Let me go back to key number two. Are we all in understanding? Is everybody in understanding what we talked about? Give me a two in the chat if we are all in understanding, give me a two in the chat. I need to know if you are in full understanding. Again, my favorite book, the greatest selling book of all time, you can look it up. It says in all thy getting, get understanding. And so I'm not just here for my health. I'm here so that you can be a part of the 23%. I love it. I see the twos rolling in. Let's go ahead and go to key number three. Let's go ahead and go to key number three. Key number three is federal student aid. I know, I know you've heard the horror stories. I know you've heard your aunties and your uncles talk about how much money they make and they're not going to get any money from the FAFSA. That's true. You might not, but you still need to do it. You still need to do it. I would love if we were all in the room together. Maybe one day soon we could all get in the same room together. But if we were all in the same room, I would say, y'all ask me why. Okay, you could put it in the chat. Ask me why. Why do you still need to do it? Why do you still need to do it? I love it. You still need to do it for multiple reasons. The first is that there, if you are eligible for debt-free funds from the federal government, right, free application for federal student aid, you want to be able to get them. Additionally, most of your outside scholarships and most of your additional debt-free opportunities that we will discuss tonight will require you to already have had your FAFSA done. Everything is punctual. Everything is timely. All right. And so in the year, it, it's the date has changed in the past. Right. But October the 1st, as far as I know, still this year is when the FAFSA application opens for the following school year. So here's an example. October the 1st, 2021, last October. OK, follow me. October the 1st, 2021 is when the FAFSA application opened for this coming fall. October 22 or August 22. Okay. I need you to do as close to October one as possible. Everybody that works with me in Caps and Gowns University, which is a mentoring program from my book, right? Caps and Gowns University that's with me in the fall. We make sure to complete our FAFSA applications. I walk them through it every single uh, time before so that we can do it as close to October one as possible. Okay. 
So in addition to you being eligible, if you are, right, and there's one that even if you don't get any grants, there's an award that we'll talk about earlier that you may be able to obtain. Even if you don't automatically qualify for it, you still, uh, uh, even if you don't automatically uh, qualify for it, you still may be, may be able to get the award if there are opportunities left, but you need to do the FAFSA, okay? All right, FAFSA offers an array of awards, okay? And, it's, and it can contribute to your debt-free degree, all right? Be punctual, do it as close to October 1. And on that particular FAFSA, this is so important, y'all. That's why I had the top 10 exercise, right? When you add, you can add schools to receive your FAFSA, right? So you can add your top 10 schools, Morgan, Coppin, UMES, uh, uh, whatever schools, right? And, and when you apply, they're going to be able to see your FAFSA so that, they, so that they can award you, all right? So it's vitally important that you get your FAFSA done as early as possible, as close to October 1 as you possibly can, all right? Just get it in, all right? Don't, there's, there's no way around it. OK, there's no way around it. I want you to go ahead and get it in. Remind me or uh, about extenuated circumstances at the end. I want to give that caveat because, you know, we come from diverse backgrounds and not everybody, you know, has the same type of uh, um, situation at home. And so there are ways that we can evade and, and move through that process. All right. But we want to make sure that we're completing our FAFSA every single year as close to October 1 as humanly possible. All right, let's move forward. Let's move forward. I'll move through this really quickly. Here are two types of grants. These are the main types of grants that most of you guys will see if you're eligible. This is from the federal government or the FAFSA. It's the Pell Grant or the uh, Federal SEOG, Supplementary Education um, Opportunity Grant. And again, these are need-based grants. So the FAFSA will basically tell what your financial standpoint is. And then it, it will say, uh, this is what... Uh, the Green Ellis family is eligible for, okay? And so again, that's only one source. Hold your horses. I know you're saying, well, I'm not, I make too much. I'm not going to, you don't know what they're going to give you, okay? You still need to do it, all right? There's no way around it. I need you to make sure that we're completing that FAFSA as early as we possibly can every single year, all right? Again, here are two of the main grants that you will see, and there are a few others that you can look up on fafsa.ed.gov, uh, but they're more specific, right? These are the main ones that most will qualify for. Let's move forward. I know I'm moving a little bit fast. Let me give you this little piece of information about loans. Remember how I told you guys that um, you, you, need to be, have, you need to be informed, you need to have the right information. Let me tell you a little something about loans, right? With, with student loans, right, it is an offer to you. So especially for you seniors, when you get your award letter, you should have one by now. If you know where you're going, if you made your decision, you should have an award letter by now. And if, and if you don't, you need to call that Office of Financial Aid. When you see these types of awards, right, when you see these types of awards, these are offers. You don't have to take them. Four in the chat, if that makes sense. When a loan is given to you, it's only an offer. Or in other words, hey, do you want to go to the park today? And you can respectfully say, no, I don't, I don't think I want to go to the park today. And I'm being serious, right? Because a lot of times families are misinformed and they'll take a $5,000 loan when they only have a $300 balance. And if you do have a balance that you need and in the worst case scenario, you have to take a loan, take what you need and that's it. And pay it off as soon as possible, all right? Subsidized are the better of the two, unsubsidized are the worst of the two, but parent plus loans are the devil, if I can even say that, all right? And I'm just trying to be as transparent as possible. They have the worst interest rates. They run your credit. It's a whole list of things that you just don't really want to deal with. But again, sometimes it's necessary. It was necessary for my family because we weren't prepared. So we had to do it. My mom had to make that sacrifice, right? But because we're on here, we're not going to have to make those same sacrifices, we're going to be informed. We're going to give ourselves adequate time and implement this plan that we're making tonight. All right. Again, so remember this. If it's a loan, it's an offer and you don't have to take it. If it's a loan, it is an offer and you do not have to take it. That's so vitally important. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and move forward. I'm running out of time. Here's that particular award that I said earlier. You may be able to obtain even if you don't get any other grants from the FAFSA, right? Now, work study is a need-based award, meaning it goes to those who have the most financial need first, but every school is, a, is allotted uh, uh, basically a, an amount that they can use for work study. 
And again, a student that is eligible for it doesn't necessarily have to take it. So in theory, if there are students who do not accept their award or say, I don't want to do work study, they still have their eligibility. And you can approach the Office of Financial Aid and say, hey, do you guys have any other opportunities for work study? Right. So you're going to be able to earn money. But this is a financial aid award that can go towards your tuition debt free. OK, debt free. One in the chat, if that makes sense. I know I'm moving quickly. I'm running out of time. I promise you I can talk till 10 o'clock, but I want to be respectful. All right. Maybe we need to do a round two later on down the road or maybe just hit me up sometime so we can get this information. But I need you to understand that this is one of those things or one of the reasons why you need to do your FAFSA every single year, early and on time. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Shout out to the tech team. I love it. You guys are on it and killing it. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Let me give you this warning, y'all. I had a conversation every single time I mentor a family through Caps and Gowns University. When I was working in the industry, there was a family that I, that I had uh, um, been mentoring personally through the, through, through the financial aid process. And I warned them exactly what I'm about to tell you is that uh, in so many words, don't come to to, to school and play around and mess around with your grades because you can lose your financial aid. Okay. You can lose your financial aid. You don't even want to go through the academic uh, appeal process. It's, it's extensive and it may not work out for you. So here's what I want you to do, especially for all you seniors, when you get to college this fall, handle your business in the classroom because you can lose the financial aid awards. Okay. You can lose the financial aid awards. Oh, going the wrong way. My apologies. Let's go ahead and move forward. All right, here we go. Here's my favorite, my favorite one of the keys. I call it the one-two combo. And I go, and again, it's, it's more extensive in the book about how you can implement this combo. Here's the one-two combo. It's the, punt, it's, the, it's the jab and it's the hook, okay? It's the jab and the hook. The one is the FAFSA. Always do the FAFSA. Why? You want to qualify for those debt-free funds if you're eligible. Also, you're going to have opportunities for outside scholarships and outside grants when you do the FAFSA. They want to see it done, okay? But here's the two. Here's the two, right? Here's the hook. You have the FAFSA, and then you have outside organizations that you will apply to. I'm going to give you a list that you can look up tonight. I'm going to give you some other sources that you can look to specifically, especially for Maryland residents, okay? I'm going to give you some a game plan that you can use as you're approaching this process, all right? It's the one-two combo. It, your FAFSA awards are rarely going to be enough, okay? Your FAFSA awards is rarely going to be enough, all right? In most cases, it won't be enough. And so you have to implement the additional funds from outside sources. And when I say outside sources, I mean sources other than the FAFSA. Sources other than the FAFSA. Sources outside of the FAFSA. Give me a six in the chat, the number six. The number six in the chat, if that makes sense, if you are in full understanding. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I see the sixes rolling in. And again, I saw some new people jump on. If you are a senior or if you are the family of a senior in high school, make sure um, that you make that known so that we can enter your, your senior's name into the drawing for my $1,000 scholarship that I give away every single semester. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and move forward. Let's go ahead and move forward. Awesome, here we go. Give you some quick information about scholarships. In theory, they're, they're, they're like the hardest to obtain, but it's really not hard, y'all. You can literally get a scholarship for anything. There are scholarships out here that you can get for literally being left-handed. I, I kid you not, okay? I send out a list of scholarships every month to my students in Caps and Gowns University. Sorry, I could have given my credentials a little bit better. I mentor families all across the country. I don't even know how many at this point um, that I've been mentoring over the years. It's, it's hundreds of them that I've helped throughout this process. And every single month, I send out a list of scholarships that you can apply to. They are extremely extensive, okay? There are millions of dollars of scholarship funds that go unused every single year because people don't apply, all right? You need to apply to scholarships. You need to apply to scholarships. And no, I'm not talking about like one or two per week. I need you to, your minimum, I need you to be shooting for like 100 in total. I need you to be shooting for like 100. Like that's the type of grind I need us to be on. I know you're thinking, wow, man, 100, that's a lot. It ain't gonna be more than you borrowing student loans. 
<laughs> Can I just be real? It's not gonna it's not gonna cost more than you having to subject your paychecks to the plague of student loan lenders. It's not going to cost more than you having to give 25 to 30 percent of your income back to the federal government or back to private lenders when you get your first job. So you choose your heart. You, you choose your fight. You, you choose what you want to do. You pay now or you pay later. We, <laughs> let, me not go, let me not go to politics, but we can clearly see that what was promised to us ain't, ain't, ain't coming through. And so we don't need to depend on any outside source. Here's what you do. Here's what you do. I want you to go to the, the, the nearest bathroom that you have. And I want you to look in the mirror. And the first person you see is the person that I need you to be counting on. Can we do that? Can we do that? Listen, y'all, I'm an inspirational speaker first. I see some amens in the chat. Listen, don't get me hyped. I need you to understand this. If you are going to make a commitment to hold yourself accountable, just say me. Just say me. Put it in the chat. I need some me's in the chat. The first person that you see in the mirror, I need you to say to that person, hey, I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I don't matter. It don't matter how long. It don't matter how many. It don't matter what, what comes into in, in my way. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Let me calm down so we can get through this, y'all. I'm going to speed through. We got about five minutes less. Listen, get your questions together because I want to make sure that you get exactly what you need. OK, I'm going to speed through the next part. The next part we're going to talk about is grants. I call them. I call grants scholarships first cousins. OK. Oh, excuse me. I'm going a little bit too fast ahead of myself. So we talked about scholarships. Here are six different types. One, two, three, four, five, three, four, five, six, seven types of scholarships. Excuse me. Um, and I go extensive in the book, right? You have academic scholarships. You have athletic scholarships. But again, these are the most common, but not the only ones. You don't got to be super talented or super smart to get scholarships, okay? Or, or, or artistic scholarships as well. But here are the ones that I also want you to focus on. Every institution, I don't care where they are. I don't care where they are, what neighborhood, what zip code, uh, uh, HBCU or, or not HBCU, right? Everybody has scholarship funds. Everybody has awards that you can obtain, right? But you got to find them. You have to inquire. Again, we just made a commitment, whatever it takes, right? So I need you to be inquiring with your office of financial aid. I need you to be inquiring with your office of institutional advancement. I need you to be inquiring with your department of study, the mathematics department, the college of business. Hey, where are these funds at? I need to know what I qualify for, all right? So you've got academic, athletic, artistic, departmental, institutional, organizational, and state scholarships. State scholarships are, 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 are among the most important, okay? Every state gives benefit to students who are residents that go to the school in state, okay? Additionally, if you have student loans and you went to a school in the state of Maryland and you are a Maryland resident, there is a debt relief grant that they award every single year based on what you qualify for. My wife and I get it every year, okay? You gotta apply. I think the debt, the application is open from like July to September or so, but we can talk more extensively about that later. We're talking about not getting into debt, <laughs> okay? Before we even go down that road. Here are different types of scholarships that you can apply to. And again, I'm moving fast intentionally because we've got two more keys to cover. I'm gonna do it quick, fast, and in a hurry, okay? State scholarships, every local senator and delegate, your elected officials have funds, but you gotta reach out to them, okay? In Maryland, the state scholarships are facilitated through the Maryland Higher Education Commission. All of you senior families, if you've done it, say me in the chat. I need you to know, I need to know if you've um, um, completed your MHEC or Maryland Higher Education Commission uh, information for this year. If you did not, don't miss it next year. The deadline has passed, but don't miss it next year. If you are also a Baltimore City resident or if you go to a school in Baltimore City, you can also tap into funds from uh, the College Bound Foundation. Yes, the College Bound Foundation, they have extensive scholarships. They give up to like $3 million every single year, okay? But the state scholarships, if you go to a school in the state of Maryland, again, the benefit is for the Maryland residents. You want to apply with the Maryland Higher Education Commission. Here's one example of why you need to get your FAFSA done on the front end, because the Maryland Higher Education Commission requires you to have it done before you can submit your FAFSA. All right, here are a couple of places where you can find scholarships. Scholarship.com, the Scholarly app. The Scholarly app is a Black-owned app. It's a guy named by, uh, by the name of Christopher Gray. It's like a... <laughs> Uh, there's a red emblem. Uh, there's a red emblem on the app. You can look it up. I won't specifically say what animal it is. I don't want to cause no tension on here. Here's another app platform that you can get uh, um, 
scholarships from it's called unigo unigo.com and also bold.org okay get these down take a screenshot write it in your notes scholarships.com the scholarly app unigo.com and bold.org here's a quick rule of thumb if anybody asks you for your social security number and you're applying for a scholarship it's probably a scam don't do it okay don't get too hung up on whether or not you want to get this scholarship there are plenty out there just skip that one okay just skip that one let's go ahead and move forward Let's go ahead and move forward. Awesome. Again, like I was mentioning earlier, another type of debt-free uh, funding are grants, okay? I call them scholarships first cousins, and they are typically associated with a specific cause. They're just like scholarships, but the funding source is, is typically different, and so they call it uh, uh, grants, basically, um, in a nutshell. Um, let me also say that a lot of these grants and scholarships may have contingencies, like you have to have maintain a certain type of GPA. You may have to maintain a, a certain a, a course load, right? So make sure that when you're applying to these scholarships that you are able to maintain whatever they're requiring of you. Okay. Scholarship essays are going to be one of the main ways where you can set yourself apart. The idea that I want you to carry is I want you to literally sell yourself. Okay. I want you to get in the room. How do you do that? You put your best foot forward on a piece of paper, okay? Here are the most common questions that you will encounter while you're applying. What's your story, right? What have you overcome? Tell them who you are. What will you do once you obtain your degree? And what will you do with the scholarship funds? That's really simple, y'all, right? But this is the opportunity for you to put your best foot forward and get people to buy in and believe in you. OK, there are people out here who I promise you want to invest in the future. And why not you? Awesome. This is my last key. Investing in your future. All right. I know if you're anything like mine, like how I told my family, right, like how I told you and I'm done. We can go to the question and answer right after this last part. Like how I mentioned before, I told you I came from a background where both my parents worked. Right. We had enough, but we didn't have no extra. OK, does that make sense? We had no extra. All right. We went on vacation every once in a while. You know, our, our spoons weren't silver, but they, you know, they weren't plastic. And I'm not knocking. I'm just trying to give you context as to what I'm trying to say. Right. And so because we didn't have no extra, we really needed Jordan Green Ellis about 15 years ago. <laughs> we really needed this conversation about 15 years ago as we were preparing for school. Right. And here's the thing. Whether or not you, you, you're either going to invest money, you're going to have the money, or you're going to have to invest your time. We talked about making a commitment, right? And so I need you to make that commitment, if you haven't already done so, to investing your time, all right? Here's another uh, principle that you can implement on your journey, your matriculation to and through college. You can have in your household, I encourage you to do it now, moms and dads, aunties, uncles, grandma, grandpa, I need you to implement it now. Scholarship Sundays, scholarship Saturdays. OK, an hour scholarship Sundays, scholarship Saturdays where we're searching and we're actively applying. OK, listen, y'all, you can you can argue whether or not um, incentive based uh, uh, rewards is good, but I think that is good. Right. Reward your children, reward your scholars for doing the work. OK, don't just give them the pat on the back. Don't just say, well, this is what you're supposed to do. It is. We know. But reward them, okay? Get them a little ice cream every once in a while, okay? Set a goal for them so that they can be driven, so that they can get what they need, so that they won't have to subject their paychecks to the plague of student loan lenders. Listen, I'm two minutes over time, but I'm done. We're going to open up the floor, I believe, for question and answer at this time, and I want you to lay it on me. Everything you got, I want to get everything out the way so that you are all in full understanding so that you won't get caught by surprise. I'm going to turn it over to you, VP Jeff, uh, v Vice President uh, Jeffries. It's on you. We can do the question and answer wow. at this time. All I can say is, wow, I was sitting here taking notes. I love your energy and your passion um, and your dedication and commitment to the work that you do through your organization, Cats and Gowns University. I love it. You took us to church and you brought us back. And now we right here with the collection plate trying to get these questions, trying to get these questions. Jordan, it is so nice to see that we have a brother here. You know, sometimes we see a lot of women who are in this field who are passionate. And it's exciting to see as a black man, a father, a son, a member of a fraternity that you are taking your experience um, and utilizing it for good to help our community. At this time, I'm going to open up the floor for any questions that you may have. Um, and I'm asking, you know, we are, you know, we want to make sure that we keep your, you keep your questions 
um, concise to make sure that we have room to get through to a couple of questions. Any questions, comments that you may have for um, Jordan, please raise your hand. Um, I see the first two people up. I'm going to go to uh, the Parkers. I don't know if these is a relationship, but y'all starting to be our favorite couple <laughs> on here. Here we go. Okay, brother, he got his t-shirt on representing yeah. his brother. I Come love on. It. Uh, What's up, dog? Yo, and Rude Dog, good to see you again, too. Good to see you, man. Hey, real quick, Hi, dog. <laughs> so uh, we did have a quick question. We heard you sure. make reference to a debt relief loan. Mm -hmm. Wanted to know what the name of that one was and whether or not they were more like it. Yes. So it's it's specifically for the state of Maryland, right? Um, I don't know the exact name, but it's like Maryland Student Loan Debt Relief, okay? And so they, they, they run it back every single year, but there's a window where you apply for it, all right? Just literally Google uh, Maryland Student Loan Debt Relief, and it should take you to a portal that's facilitated by the Maryland Higher Education Commission, or MHEC, okay? And so you can apply every single year. Basically, they're going to... Um, Verify that you have student loans, that you went to uh, an institution in Maryland, right? Um, you got to upload your transcript. Um, it doesn't have to be official. It can be unofficial. They're going to verify all the information. They're going to look at, um, I believe, your taxes and then and, and to say whether or not you qualify and what you qualify for. And when you submit your taxes for the following year, what you do is you just submit the confirmation and you'll get a check. You'll get a check incorporated with your return, whatever return you get, and you make the payment, and then you have to verify it again, okay? But that's how it works. Literally, just Google it, but you can hit me up. Like, <laughs> you know, if, if you have trouble finding it, I'll make sure that you get squared away. Love it. Great question. I do mm -hmm. This is informative. Ruben. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your question, the Parkers. Uh, I see that we have Samara. Scott, you have a question. Yes, and thank you. You nailed my name. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you, Jordan, so much for the wealth of information. As a um, Morgan State University graduate with tons of loans that I'm trying to get paid off before my elementary um, school student, um, you know, gets to college. Um, I just wanted to know the name of your book, if you could share that in the chat so I can start getting to work early. <laughs> Absolutely. It's called Caps and Gowns, and I'll put it in the chat. Caps and Gowns, all smiles, no frowns. The keys to earning a debt-free degree. Awesome. Tech team is holding it down. Yes, the it. link to Jordan's link is book right is there. in his bio, right in the chat box. Awesome. Awesome. So, okay. yes. yes, definitely. I have a whole section in uh, the book specifically for elementary school families, talking about um, college savings plans, what you can do, like before my son was born, my wife and I had an investment account opened up for him for when he gets to that point. And, and, and it's, 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 a, it's a little bit of money over a long period of time, okay? Obviously, having more money is, is great, but you just chop away at it, all right? And you're strategic, right? You, yeah. you, 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 you mold your child into, into what it costs, the financial aspects that's associated with going to school. You put them in that right frame of mind. You let them know, hey, this is what it's going to take. And then you begin to structure your plan. You build that top 10 list and say, oh, we got to weigh our options because this is a financial investment for your future. Yes, indeed. I'm trying to steer him away from Ohio State. I'm like, what is in Ohio? <laughs> well, let him know how much it costs and tell him and tell him, say, hey, you know, you're responsible for this tuition, not mommy. Yes, mommy, we're mommy on not it. responsible. <laughs> got it. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have Evelyn with what's your question. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for having this event. This is wonderful information. I was really excited and feeling your passion for this topic. So thank you so much. Um, one question was, what were the fees that you said that can be avoided? Oh, thank you. Thank you. I was writing stuff down to try to remember, but I, I forgot <laughs> that one. Okay, so here's one. This is specifically for undergraduate students, okay? Every undergraduate student, most, every, I, I've run into to one institution that, says that they don't do it, but I'm, I'm not fully convinced. I want to talk to somebody. But the point is, is that every undergraduate student is charged for health insurance. 
Okay, if you're a full time student, mm -hmm. especially if you're living on campus, you're charged for health insurance. Give you some context. Again, I talk about it in the book. My health insurance was about 25% of my tuition and fees when I was an undergraduate student at Coppin, and I didn't know that I could waive it. Mm -hmm. OK, so basically, yeah. if you have your own health insurance, you can say, hey, I have my own. So I don't want to pay for this and you, and, and you don't have to. But okay. again, it's it's a deadline. There's a window. Every institution is going to have a specific process of how you do it and their own deadline. But that's one of those fees that you can avoid. Perfect. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for that question, Evelyn. We are going to take our last question. Um, Madam Vice President, we do have three really good questions from Facebook. We wanted to okay. be fair, so they okay. were supposed to send you that on the side. Go ahead, Ms. Parker, and then we'll get the Facebook questions to you, Madam VP. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thanks, Hi. Mr. Jordan. This was amazing information. Thank you. I said in the chat, I wish I had this when I was an undergrad. I wish I had somebody telling me all this information. Um, quick question. So I was kind of sidetracked by my son, but I remember you saying something like list the colleges. I think you said 10 colleges. Um, what were the methods or tools that you said to use to do a process of elimination? Gotcha. So here's, so, so the top 10 exercise is essentially uh, going to be creating a target for you to hit, right? Especially for the, for the younger students, it's really more like a formality if you were to get them in the right frame of mind. So you list your top 10 schools, you wanna look at the programs of study, right? So you wanna know what they're interested in, if it's graphic design, if it's music, if it's mathematics, if it's social, uh, social sciences, whatever, right? And you wanna put that on there so they can get in the right frame of mind. So you'll have the program of study, you'll have the school, you'll have the admissions requirement. So what does it take for you, your GPA, what, uh, what uh, a lot of standardized testing at this point is, is being like removed as an admissions requirement, but some still have it. So you want to incorporate on there as needed. And then also the most important part, right, is the cost that is associated, the tuition and fees with every single institution, okay? Meal plans, room and board, uh, technology fees, all of that. You should be able to go on every single institution's website and see a list of the tuition and fees that are associated with that particular school. And then you create your plan from there. Real quick, I just wanna share another strategy that can be used to decrease and eliminate student loan usage. Real quick, if you are local, you can still have a full college experience and commute, okay? Where I went to school, Copper State University, I pretty much it evened out. I, I boarded for two years and I commuted for two years, okay? And I was Mr. Coppin, okay? I pledged Omega. I <laughs> Listen, I was very, extensively involved on campus okay and listen let me i don't want to say it to impress you you can ask we have a witness on the call okay she might not want to talk but we have a witness on the call the point is that's going to cost less you can also um do community college for two years right let's take the shame away off of that ain't nothing wrong with that i promise you if i would have had the strategy i probably would have done it but i was pressed to play baseball okay so i was pressed to play baseball so maybe not but you can do community college as well and what you do is if you do want to let's say live on campus the next year you make accommodations for that in your finances right you say save up to hit a target. You get involved on campus, you get in student leadership, specifically at HBCUs, you can become the SGA president or the SGA vice president and get your tuition paid for. You can become an RA, not just at HBCUs, but you can become an RA and your and your room and board be, be taken care of. I told you guys, the student that I mentor, she's the current Miss Coppin State University. She decreased a lot of her student loan usage because she got involved as Miss Coppin, as SEPB chair, joining the Honors College, okay? So you can get creative and decrease and eliminate that student loan debt as well. That, that was a lot, but I yeah. Wanted, Thank you, you for your question, Ms. Parker. Um, so you. Jordan, we have two questions, a uh, couple questions from Facebook. Um, the first question came from Stacy Bilal. Um, what is the normal turnaround time uh, to hear back from scholarships, your status on a scholarship? Great question. So, so that's a great question. And there's no concrete answer. Um, typically, it's going to always be after the deadline. Here's here. And so here's, here's my philosophy as it regards to that. I can't tell you that it's going to be at least a minimum of, of two weeks, right? You, there may be an extensive amount of time that they're going to, um, to when they will get back to you, right? But I don't want you to worry about that because there are so many other scholarships out here that you can apply to, okay? So I want you to... Oh, so yeah, so just make sure that you're implementing that and applying to many scholarships to increase your probability. 
Okay, and then our last question from Facebook is from Regina Jordan. Um, awesome. Are there any ways to negotiate? Is there any way to negotiate out of state fees? That's a great question. To my knowledge, no. Um, and when you say negotiate, are you saying, can you, I mean, obviously you can't talk, but uh, when you say negotiate, I'm thinking you're meaning like perhaps lower your tuition. No, it's going to be what it is. But again, you can get creative. I would say that if you want to look at that as you're negotiating, you can get creative and implement tactics so that you can decrease your options for uh, student loans as well. Yes, thank you. As you can see, this is a, you know, a much needed hot topic yes. that, you know, is, is, is a lot of people are looking forward to. And I see that based on, you know, the poll that we did earlier, a lot of folks on the call are parents or guardians. I have worked in higher education for 18 years, wow. first generation college student, and I took advantage of being an RA to get that incentive. I didn't know about it, but somebody put me on, someone like yourself, told me about what I could do to lower my tuition costs. If there was anything, a grant, anything that I could do to lower my tuition, I was doing it. So I want to say thank you, Jordan. Um, and we are coming down to the wire. So I'm going to bring Raina on really quickly so that she can um, try to wrap this up before we take it home. Raina. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, Jordan, that was absolutely fantastic i was going to bring my coins up to the altar and um, <laughs> give them to you um, and like everybody said you know i wish i had this information fortunately my parents were able to pay but i do have a middle schooler i have the book and we're going to jump right into it so what i heard you say some of my takeaways from tonight was you got to have a plan right we got to have a plan of action a strategic plan um, apply for FAFSA, period, dot com. It doesn't matter, everybody. You just don't know what you're eligible for, right? Get the information, you know, research the schools, see what they have to offer, see if it's um, someplace where your kid wants to go. Um, so those were my three takeaways. But I wanted to know if you had to leave one thought with the community, what would be... Um, a takeaway you want them to go with from this evening tonight? The, the biggest takeaway is in the last section of my book, and that is what I've said twice tonight, is that mm -hmm. none of this information matters if you don't do it. Yes. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's, if you have the knowledge and you don't apply it, it's just going to be theory. It's not going to be in practice. And so I want you to use what you've learned tonight and actually do it because yes. it works. I have students right now that have no student loans and they're going to be graduating from, uh, from colleges all around, all around the country. They're going to be good every single year. Okay. So it works, but you got to work it. That's what I want to leave you with. That's Thank great. You so That's much. Good. Thank you so much, Raina. Thank you, Jordan. So as we come to a close, I'm going to just go ahead and give my final remarks before I turn it over to my Madam President. Jordan, you know, on first and foremost, you know, we talked about giving uh, the, the giveaways. We do have giveaways for the first three individuals who logged on early. It is important to be early. They said they did not want to be in the overflow. So I <laughs> thank you ladies for joining us early. Uh, Kim, if you can drop, there, she already on it. So we have Laura Nottingham, Ani A. Washington, and Regina Jordan. You will walk away uh, with Jordan's book. If you can email us, we're gonna put the email address in the chat box so that you can claim your free book. And also we have, uh, the first three individuals who asked questions tonight, you will also win a copy of Jordan, Jordan's book. So thank you so much for your participation. But I want to say, uh, okay, so the question, the, the three individuals who asked those questions, we had the Parkers, Chanel, uh, Chanel Parker and her, her bae. Um, we have Samara Scott and Evelyn Johnson. You will also win a prize. Be sure to email info at akaabgo.com to claim your prizes. I want to say first and foremost, Jordan, on behalf of Alpha Beta Gamma Omega, thank you so much for an amazing workshop. Uh, thank you for keeping it real. I absolutely love your energy and your passion and again, your commitment to this topic, which is much needed. Many of us on the call, college graduates, 
We wish we had this information. And like you said, you know, take this information and share it with others. Buy his book, um, do the work, and you start early, create those plans so that you can get a jump start on getting those debt-free college degrees. I want to thank Raina, our Target One co-lead, as well as Jennifer Harris, who is your uh, colleague who used to work at Coven State University. Um, she couldn't be on today, um, but I want to thank my hardworking ABGO, ABGO ambassadors and the tech team, so Kimberly Bartfield, Tia Thomas, and Kenya. Um, and I want to thank you all, you know, community members, families, and friends. Thank you so much for showing up each month for our programs of service. Your presence speaks volumes about your dedication and commitment to supporting the work that we do as a chapter. And we want to say thank you because we couldn't do it without your support. I want to turn the floor over at this time to our Madam President, Sylvia Lowe, who will turn, uh, who will give final remarks and who will conclude, wrap up our program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Vice President Jordan. Thank you so much. You were phenomenal. We have a, a back room, as I guess the term everybody knows now with all this tech stuff. And we were like, he's great. We gotta have him back. So you definitely um, have become part of the Alpha Beta Gamma Omega family, um, PNG love. And uh, we are hoping that as life kind of moves forward, um, despite the pandemic, um, we do wanna do some interactive programs and we will definitely be inviting you back. Um, your information is uh, very important um, as, um, Kiki said there was definitely um, many of us that have our degrees that did not have some of this information um, and you know we have kids we have grandkids we might have you know nieces nephews that this was such a powerful opportunity for them to learn and I think you said it best you have to just put in the work it's there you have to put in the work and there are millions of dollars of scholarships that go unaccounted for um, I do want to do a plug for Alpha Kappa Alpha we have an educational advancement foundation where we have millions of dollars, like literally millions of dollars, and some of those scholarships never go tapped. So I do wanna encourage anyone who's on the call, um, because like Jordan said, you're right, there are scholarships for if you have green eyes and you're left-handed, that's it. People who want to give to people like themselves, they will develop all kinds of scholarships. Um, I'm creating one with Alpha Kappa Alpha for first-generation Americans that are in law school, because even when you get on to graduate school, there are not as many scholarship opportunities out there or you may be too busy to look. So I wanna look for Jamaican Americans like myself who wanna be lawyers like myself. And so I'm funding a scholarship in order to grow that to help the next generation. So um, there's a lot of information out here. I think Jordan has given you a wealth of knowledge, um, the book, and I will donate two books to the Facebook crew. There are two ladies on Facebook that were very interactive. Uh, we do encourage Zoom, but Facebook gets a lot of love too, because sometimes it's that last minute, you know, repost that catches someone's attention. So the two ladies on Facebook. Hi, I was hanging out on Facebook rather than on Zoom tonight. Um, I will purchase two of Jordan's book. More than that, I will be donating to some of my mentees that are in high school to make sure that their parents are on top of these things because um, education does lead a pathway to wealth. And if you don't get the education, it's not that you can't do well, but um, even if you are going to trade school, mechanics make well over six figures. Um, HVAC, well over six figures. But guess what? It's still, you still have to pay. Truck drivers, well over six figures, but you have to get training to be in those professions as well. So, and you may wanna to go to college and get a business degree to know how to run your own business. So Jordan, again, I just wanna thank you for your, your energy, the information. This is really a wealth of knowledge. I saw a lot of people scribbling notes and taking advantage of this wonderful information. We will definitely look forward to having you back. Um, to all of our attendees, thanks so much for your interactive engagement. You all were really on it. Y'all were putting those ones and those twos and those sixes. Y'all were making sure, no, we paying attention. I'm gonna have to steal some of those techniques, Jordan. I like that. <laughs> but uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on. We have a very busy May and June coming up. I want to encourage you. We're having an in-person event. Um, Ms. Raina does wear two hats. Um, she is sponsoring uh, or putting up a spinning class that will be live and interactive. It is on our Facebook page. You can purchase a ticket to join us. It'll be an outdoor spin class. There will be COVID-19 procedures, but we are starting to kind of integrate and come back into public. We have um, um, community, there's a community event happening in Turner Station, which is our service area. There's 71st. And for you that don't know, we were chartered in Turner Station, Maryland, which is a historically African-American community on the eastern side of Baltimore County. This is their 71st annual community fair. 
So if you're available, there will be COVID-19 procedures. Come on out. They're going to have a parade. They're going to have floats, marching bands. Uh, we'll be there doing some work. So please come on out. And um, if there is nothing else, we have some feedback for you to give to us. We have a QR code that we use so that you can quickly give us some feedback because we want to provide the right kind of opportunities to learn and grow that are in alignment with our national office and our programs. So this is a great way to help us do that. So if you have ideas, this is your chance to give us that feedback. And with that being said, I wanna wish everyone a good night. I always close out with my Jay-Z quote. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you were here with us and we don't take it for granted. And we look forward to seeing you again soon because we have a lot of programs coming up in May. Gubernatorial debate. And we have some exciting other things coming up. Please like our Facebook page and check out our events. And we look forward to seeing you again, both in person and on Zoom. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Kiki, I'm getting my QR code right now. I don't want to get in trouble. Good night.